The shape of your pen is controlling how fast your cattle gain weight, and almost nobody knows this. Sounds insane, right? But check this out. I visited a feedlot where they redesigned their pens using some research from animal behavior scientists, and their cattle started gaining an extra 0.3 kilograms per day without changing anything about the feed. Same feed, same genetics, same everything, just a different pen layout. And when they explained why this works, it made perfect sense. It's all about cattle movement patterns, stress reduction, and feed access optimization. The crazy part? This design actually costs less to build than traditional pens. I'm going to walk you through the exact measurements, the exact layout, and the behavioral science that makes this work. Here's what your pen is doing wrong. Let me start with the most common mistake. Most producers build rectangular pens because, well, that's just how it's always been done. Straight lines, 90-degree corners, feed bunks along one side. Seems logical, right? But here's what's actually happening inside that pen. When cattle are confined in rectangular spaces with sharp corners, they naturally congregate in those corners. This creates a dominance hierarchy problem. The stronger animals push the weaker ones into the corners, and those subordinate cattle get trapped. They can't access feed without going through the dominant animals. And when cattle are stressed, their cortisol levels spike. High cortisol equals poor feed conversion. Poor feed conversion equals slower weight gain. It's that simple. Now, the research that changed everything came from Temple Grandin's work on curved handling systems. She discovered that cattle naturally move in circular patterns when they're calm. They have a flight zone, and they prefer gentle curves over sharp angles. So some innovative producers started asking, what if we apply this same principle to pen design, not just handling facilities? And that's when things got interesting. The optimal pen shape is actually a curved rectangular design, sometimes called a racetrack or oval pen configuration. But it's not just about making it round. There are specific measurements that matter, and I'm going to give them to you right now. The ideal pen should be three times longer than it is wide. So if you're building a pen that's 10 meters wide, you want it roughly 30 meters long. But here's the key. Instead of sharp 90-degree corners, you create rounded corners with a radius of at least 2.5 to 3 meters. This prevents cattle from getting trapped and allows continuous movement flow. Feed bunk placement is where most people mess this up completely. Traditional designs put feed bunks on one short side or one long side. Bad idea. In the optimized design, you want feed access on both long sides of the pen. This doubles your linear bunk space, and more importantly, it gives subordinate animals an escape route. If a dominant animal is eating on one side, the weaker cattle can access feed on the opposite side without conflict. Less conflict means less stress. Less stress means better gains. The numbers don't lie. Here's something most producers don't consider. Bunk space per animal. The minimum should be 45 centimeters per head for finishing cattle. But if you really want to maximize gains, you should aim for 60 centimeters per head. That extra 15 centimeters makes a massive difference because it allows all animals to eat simultaneously during peak feeding times. When cattle have to wait their turn to eat, you create a dominance hierarchy problem again. The dominant animals eat first and eat longer. The subordinate cattle get less time at the bunk, they eat faster, they don't ruminate properly, and their feed efficiency drops. You're literally losing money every single day this happens. Water placement is another critical factor that almost everyone gets wrong. I see producers putting one water tank in the corner of the pen all the time. Here's why that's costing you money. Cattle drink after they eat. It's their natural pattern. If your water is far from your feed, or if it's in a corner where dominant animals can guard it, you're creating stress and reducing intake. The optimal design places water sources at both ends of the feed bunk area, at least two tanks per pen, positioned along the fence line but not in corners. This creates multiple access points and prevents guarding behavior. Now, let me tell you about the drainage secret that nobody talks about. The ground slope in your pen should be between 2 and 4%. Not flat, not steep, two to four percent. And here's the part that's counterintuitive. The slope should run perpendicular to the feed bunk, not parallel. Why? Because when it rains, you want water running away from the feeding area, not along it. Wet feeding areas lead to muddy conditions near the bunk, which leads to foot problems, which leads to reduced feeding time, which leads to, you guessed it, lower weight gains. Everything is connected. The surface material matters more than you think. Concrete is expensive, but it pays for itself in the feeding area. You want a concrete apron extending at least three meters out from the feed bunk. This keeps cattle on solid ground while they're eating, reduces mud, prevents hoof problems, and makes manure management easier. 
The rest of the pen can be compacted soil or road base, but that 3-meter feeding zone should absolutely be concrete if you're serious about maximizing gains. Here's a retention technique that high-performing feedlots use, the loafing mount. This is an elevated, well-drained area in the pen where cattle can rest. It should be positioned away from the feed and water areas, typically in the center or far end of the pen. The mound should be 45 to 60 centimeters higher than the surrounding pen floor, with gentle slopes on all sides. Cattle naturally prefer to bed on elevated, dry ground. When they're comfortable during resting periods, they ruminate better, digest better, and gain faster. A well-designed loafing mound can add 0.1 to 0.2 kilograms per day to your average daily gain. That's massive over a finishing period. Shade and windbreak orientation is something that changes based on your geography, but the principle is universal. Your pen should be oriented so that the long axis runs east to west. This maximizes the shade area during the hottest part of the day. If you're in a cold climate, you want windbreaks on the north and west sides to block prevailing winter winds. If you're in a hot climate, you need shade structures covering at least 15 to 20 percent of the pen area. Heat stress can reduce feed intake by 20 to 30 percent. You can't gain weight if you're not eating. Design your pen with climate control in mind from day one. Let me give you the exact stocking density that research supports. For finishing cattle, you want 6 to 9 square meters per head in covered or partially covered pens and 9 to 14 square meters per head in open pens. Overcrowding is one of the fastest ways to destroy your gains. When cattle don't have enough space, they can't all lie down at the same time. Rest is when growth happens. If your cattle are standing around because there's not enough space to bed down, they're burning calories instead of converting feed to muscle. Simple math. More space equals better rest equals faster gains. Now, before I give you the final optimization secret, let me ask you this. Have you noticed animals standing around instead of eating in your pens? Have you seen cattle hanging out in corners? Are some animals gaining faster than others with no obvious explanation? If you answered yes to any of these questions, your pen design is costing you money right now. But here's the good news. Most of these fixes don't require rebuilding everything from scratch. The final optimization that ties everything together is fence design. Use smooth, visible fencing. Barbed wire is outdated for feedlot pens. It causes injuries, it creates stress, and injured cattle don't gain weight. Pipe rail fencing or smooth cable fencing is ideal. The fence should be visible. Cattle should see it clearly and understand the boundary. Paint the top rail a contrasting color if needed. When cattle can clearly see boundaries, they move more calmly, they don't crash into fences, and the entire pen operates with less stress. Less stress, better gains. I keep coming back to this because it's the foundation of everything. Here's what separates the producers who succeed from those who struggle. Attention to behavioral details. Your cattle are telling you every day what's working and what's not. Watch how they move through the pen. Watch where they bed down. Watch the feeding patterns. The cattle that gain the fastest are the ones that eat calmly, rest comfortably, and move without stress. Your pen design should facilitate all three of these behaviors. So, let me bring this all together for you. The perfect pen is three times longer than it is wide, with rounded corners, feed access on both long sides, 60 centimeters of bunk space per head, multiple water sources away from corners, 2-4% to ground slope perpendicular to the bunk, concrete apron at the feeding area, a well-drained loafing mound, proper orientation for climate, adequate space per animal, and smooth, visible fencing. That's the complete system. Each piece supports the others. Miss one element, and the whole system becomes less effective. Now I want to hear from you. What's your current pen setup? Are you seeing slower gains than expected? Have you tried any curved pen designs? Drop a comment below and let's talk about your specific situation. The biggest bulls and cow community is here to help each other succeed. We're building a network of producers who care about doing this right, who want to improve, and who understand that better animal welfare equals better profits. It's not one or the other, it's both. If this information helped you see your pens differently, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right now. We're releasing new content every week on practical, science-based cattle management. This channel is for producers who want real information, not theories, not guesses, but proven strategies that work in the real world. And share this video with another rancher who could benefit. We all do better when we all learn together. That's what this community is about. Better cattle management, better results, better ranching. I'll see you in the next video.